Hanging Dude, there it that is. Smiley Kaufman for 61. Wow. I'm Smiley Kaufman, and this is The Smiley Show. gentlemen there it is i'm calling this rory Oki. it's my uh working term that we're gonna go we're gonna go with for the time being what a flourish to the end of the zurich classic one of course by rory mcelroy and shane lowry the former of which you heard there belting out don't stop believing by journey on the back end of that win because no better way to celebrate a, uh, a win over the Zurich Classic Field than going to sing <laughs> Journey Karaoke. Uh, I, I got to say, uh, Smiley, there, there are a lot of things I want to dig into this week on this tour, on the other tour. Uh, but let's just start with, can we can we grade Rory's karaoke <laughs> performance? Because that's I, that, I did not have that on my bingo card coming no, out. No, you can't grade it. Uh, and the only thing I wish they had was a mic for Shane as well. Because he yeah. just kind of was standing there awkwardly. But how does it feel to live my dream? Like this was this was my dream. That was the event that I always wanted to win. The Zurich Classic but behind the majors was number one PGA Tour event that I wanted to win in front of hometown, not hometown, but adopted hometown Louisiana crowd. Oh, gosh. And yes, sign me up for winning and then doing some karaoke with just a I don't know if that's a cover band or not. But I mean, I think Rory got a little taste of what it, it can be like if you go to an LSU game. I mean, that crowd was awesome. So what would your would that have been the song you would have sung if you won the no, classic? No. no. What would you have gone with? Colin Baton Rouge. And then after wow. I finished that, I would have. <laughs> I would have gone behind the stage, had them chant my name just like they did for Rory, and then I would come back, and then I would have done drops of Jupiter, shotgun to beer, and then I would have left. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that sounds pretty electric. Uh, who would you have been playing with? If, if um, uh, who would have been your shortlist? Been a, this was – I played in a Zurich Classic before. Pre-team. For, right. But I did play with Harold Varner and he would have definitely done it with me. <laughs> <laughs> that wow, I that, that that's quite a picture. You're a vivid picture you're painting there. You and HB3 on stage singing yeah. drops of Jupiter. Even uh, Sam Burns, are, like Sam Burns would have been great. Him and Sam and I, wow. like we've we've sung Colin Matt Rouge on on the stage before at Fred's on a on a weekend game uh. day. So this is not something that I'm unaccustomed to doing, but <laughs> I I actually I was on the set for the match between Tiger Rory versus Jordan and JT. And I asked everybody from the group, what was your go to karaoke song? And now I'm wondering what the heck his answer was. And maybe that's what his answer was. But I remember Tiger is like, I've never done karaoke. I don't have an answer. It's like, here you go, buddy. I got one for you. Tequila is your song. You got one word you got to say, and you just kind of. Yeah. So mine, there you go. mine was uh, End of the Road by Boys to Men. Okay. Great way, great way to shut it down. When I used to work for ESPN. There was a little, uh, it was a Chinese restaurant that turned into a karaoke bar after dark <laughs> called Butterfly. <laughs> and uh, the amount of Stella Artois glasses that I slammed on the ground and shattered after singing into the road uh yeah. incalculable i owe them a lot of money if, if anyone from butterfly owner of butterflies <laughs> listening i'm really sorry i'll see what i can do about the stella glasses but do uh you, do you know what my uh one 
New Year's resolution is every single year. It's do tell. <laughs> it's it's singing drops of Jupiter karaoke and not losing my voice. And that's every year. That's my goal. Is just get through the end of that. Song there are a lot without, of high notes. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a belter. You got you got to go all Damn in. Damn it! You, yeah. you really got to get up there. Yeah. yeah. And and honestly, every year I hope I remember the words, and never never do I ever remember them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, let's see. Let's see what we can come up with in uh, Louisville. Uh, I'd love to see. I'd love to find a good Stop. karaoke bar in and around. Uh, My wife Valhalla. is listening, Charlie. Do not let it. Do not say we're doing karaoke in Louisville. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll table that. We'll table that discussion for later. Uh, back pocket. Man, it. back. We'll back pocket that one. Um, man, uh, I will say that was a fun way to end a day that. Uh, on a lot of fronts could have gone in a very different direction. Yeah. Before uh, we get there, can I, can we just not, can we finish off Rory and, and, and Shane winning in new Orleans? Like, oh, come yeah. on. Well, like, please. Have, yeah, you go been ahead. To, have you been in new Orleans? I I've been to new Orleans just once. And let me, let me just do some bad radio here. Cause I'm going to show you the one time I was in new Orleans. Oh God, please have some oh, beads or something. Here we go. <laughs> this is, this is a frame ticket right here, Smiley. This is from the oh. Duke North, North Carolina semifinal game. Wow, how good is that New ticket Orleans. too? That's a beautiful looking ticket. It was Mardi Gras themed. It's the best. It, it'll forever be the best sporting event that I've ever attended in my entire life. Um, and I guess Duke won, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many people, many people uh, don't remember uh, how that game ended. Yeah, ask a Duke fan how that game ended, and they'll tell you. No, they'll they'll they'll, they'll tell you. Well, uh, North Carolina lost to Kansas in the national championship, so it doesn't really matter. It's like, yeah, it matters. Uh, but yes, that was the one time that I've been to New Orleans, spent time in New Orleans, and it was absolutely glorious. And I would love to go back. And quite honestly, as we really kind of go on a tangent here, we did the um, the the. AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am video, we played against that field. I'd love to do a video at TPC Louisiana doing some sort of variation of a team format. Like, I mean, just seeing... I don't know how we do it with all, us two, though. You know, we had such a good... Like, you're the am. Like, it's two pros, you know? What I think would be funny is... Because people are always talking about, oh, I could shoot this. I mean, I'm not a scratch. So I'm, I'm not saying any of these things. But, like, if you took a pro... And you took an amateur... And you stuck us at the pro tees... And had us play true alt shot... Like how, what, what would they shoot? Because <laughs> I, I, I would say like it, as good as you would play, I would probably take north of 90, which by the way, like to, to, all, to, to get a little bit back to with the competition us, day, like with us is north of 90. I mean, 90? I think you, I think you'd play great. I just don't think I'd have a chance on a, on a, a tour length, on a tour length. Maybe it's, I, I'm, I'm really struggling right now with the long irons and I just feel like stretch make me like the, the tee shots they're hitting on 17 today. <laughs> like bailing out right of the water. I was like, that there's just so no, hard. <laughs> I just was, I was getting the cold sweats, just watching them tee off, which by the way, like to bring it back to today's competition, the fact that Chad Ramey and Martin trainer shot a 63 in alt shot is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard of my entire life. So that just does good. not even make sense. <laughs> that is amazing. Sense. I mean, that, I mean, it, it, a lot of people would have complained had they won this event, but that is such an impressive feat to do that. It is. And before I comment on how good that was, I want to just give you what I think Shane Lowry and Rory McIlroy should do. Like, what's their next move? Because they're not just going and hopping on the jet and heading back no. to Florida. That's no. a no brainer. Stay the night. You know, what I heard is that last night at dinner, I don't know if this was on the broadcast, that yes. they were like applauded on they the got way a standing out of dinner. ovation. A standing going out of the restaurant. So you can't. You can't go home tonight. I don't care what you have to do tomorrow morning. You have to stay tonight in New Orleans. What you do, percent. you go eat a nice – go 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 eat – go to wherever. There's so many great restaurants in New Orleans. Uh, you can't even – you can't even count them. There's so many. But go – I would go find a fat steak, drink some red wine, and then take that little party to Pato's for a little piano bar action. Oh, and after Pato's. you had a couple of – couple pops there – uh, you you wind your way over to Cat's Meow to really do the to, the song and dance <laughs> with you know you could probably go a little bit more up funk you know from maybe don't stop believing I think maybe gosh uh, man there's so many different ways you could go at Cat's Meow if you had one one go at it but that's where I would end the night I think and actually no I wouldn't I wouldn't end the night there 
I would do a little cat's meow, one little cameo there. I would go hop in an Uber. I'd go to Harris and see if we can and see if we could turn that. <laughs> Keep the hot hand going, <laughs> Shane. Go Shane shoot some and while and all, I'm picturing Rory and, and Shane doing all this. Shane's gonna have a GoPro on his head so we can watch all this tomorrow morning. And I think once on they the get PGA to Harris, Tour YouTube account, perfect. Shane then says, "Hey, sorry, I don't have any cash." Can I use FedEx Cup points <laughs> for my barrier to to entry for X amount of dollars? And they would say yes. Take three three hundred FedEx Cup points for how much? How, what would that be worth? <laughs> what what yeah what? How much is a, is a is a singular FedEx Cup point worth at Harris? <laughs> and, yeah, what's the conversion rate at Harris? Uh, that place eats ten, money, ten, man. Ten thousand dollars. That place eats money, Harris. It, <laughs> you can't win there. <laughs> I mean, I, I just feel like that, first of all, that night sounds absolutely electric. And I think for many, many reasons uh, that, you know, the fact that Rory and Shane won this event was great for a lot of people. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about? Uh, the leaderboard I mean, was gross. <laughs> that, that almost goes without saying, but I mean, the fact that like, I wonder if they would have come back either way. That that was my question. Like, let's say they finish runner up. Do they still come back because of all the fun they had this week? Like, they, obviously they they're going to they come were, back to yeah. defend. Well, I mean, but well, now they're the defending champs. So obviously they're going to come back to defend, but this is, this is like a, you know, this is a bond that could last a lifetime. It's, it's what, what this tournament was designed to be all about, you know, I think right at the forefront of when it was announced and they had the weird walk in intros, it just always felt like it was there was no juice and buzz to it. But the crowds on all week, according to those guys, so they, they said it was great. Typically, the crowds are kind of, you know, hit or miss for that mm-hmm. event. So I, I just think it kind of. It's kind of what Wiv tries to do at Mayakoba. It just doesn't hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> or or wherever, like the event, like Wiv this weekend in Adelaide, like it hit because you had the fans, you had the atmosphere, and it's like, oh, this is where this can be successful. I think finally Zurich got what they were looking for in this team format with the right two guys winning and the crowd really getting behind them, which they'll get behind a winner. That's, you know, a Rory and a Shane Lowry there, but you know, it's the kids and, and Scott Brown was probably the only other two that were really big time winners that, um, that created a lot of fan buzz at least. We're going to weave back and forth on a lot of different directions on this podcast because there just was so much going on and so many things to unpack, you know, coming out of this tournament. Um, I, I want to come back to something that we've discussed on this pod before, which is like the profile of this event. Like, I still think this would be a great candidate as a fall event. So you could really lean into the fun, but also make it a tune up for any guys looking to get some partnered, you know, work Do it in the week before, before the Ryder president's cup or, cup or the Ryder cup. Yeah. But, but even as, even as you're talking about just how much fun this was and, and like, I'd say it this way, if Rory and Shane win this the week before the Ryder cup, they're not going to go out and sing karaoke on, on no. Bourbon street. Unfortunately, they so, did it two weeks before they, the Ryder cup, then <laughs> I think you could probably go and have a couple of pops. Up. But but you you mentioned Liv and I'm so interested to hear this was such an interesting juxtaposition between two events this week where clearly Liv saw this as a soft spot in the PGA Tour schedule and said, we're going to put whatever one kind of universally seems to agree is the best live event up against this in Adelaide. You know, it, the, the Australian crowds are unbelievable. Everyone's coming away saying no matter which tour it's on, Australia needs to be a home for high-level professional golf. I 100% agree with that. But prior to Rory and Shane making their move, getting in, getting in contention, and those that kind of that stretch run where there was there was some excitement building, culminating with the playoff and the vibes on 18. What this felt like to me was the difference between a member guest at a really kind of snooty, like high end serious club where there's like a lot of golf clapping and not a lot of energy and like a rip roaring, super fun member guest where guys are heckling each other and it's boozy and it's high level. And, 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 and so obviously that version was, that was the live version. That's what we saw in Adelaide with, with that two whole team playoff at the end between the, the Aussie hometown team, the, the ripper, um, and and the South African team Stinger, uh, right? Yeah, Stinger is the name of the team. Um, that to me was like, wow, I've never seen this in a pro golf tournament. It, like it was so wild seeing guys hitting balls into bunkers 
and and you know it getting cheered loudly like not just like a few straggler fans like everybody in the crowd rooting against this team and as they're addressing the ball about to hit a shot and an event with a very large purse on the line hearing oh like as if a goalkeeper is playing in a world cup match about to like kick you know kick a goal kick you're like how is this how is this happening or even guys trying to yell in their backswing and throw the stinger players off and and to me it was like that it was riveting riveting entertainment i did not want to turn away from it and and i was you know invested in in watching every shot but at the same time i'm like is this what we want pro golf to be or like how do i feel if i'm louis ustazen because like i like first of all I don't, I don't love that. And second of all, I'm making a call to Greg Norman saying we need one of these events in South Africa so we can have a chance to have a hometown crowd like that. Uh, or is it just because Australia in Adelaide or really anywhere is just their you know, professional golf. You know, you got the Aussie Open, the Aussie PGA. They're just deprived from of, of of robbed of the top players in the world. You know, I think just them getting these players that have come, which we haven't debated how I mean, there's plenty of damn good players over there on the Lift Golf Tour. We haven't denied that. But I think it's more of this place in particular just being like you said, this is a hotbed for for where the PGA Tour needs to circle and be like, yep, we should be going there. And uh, and there's plenty of other places, too, what, uh, that they could go around the world. Now, is it for everywhere? No, we've seen that with a lot of the live cough events. We're like, yep, that ain't it. Like when they go to Saudi or they go to Mayakoba, some events in, in the United States have kind of fallen flat. But – when they seem to get out of the country in Singapore and these types of places, it it just hasn't had the same type of reaction. So when we compare the two like you just did, I don't really see these two things being the same. I, I think mm. this PGA Tour one is just kind of an event that has always been a fun event with team golf. But I – I don't know where you stand, Charlie, on team golf right now. I kind of go back and forth with where where all of this should land on the PGA Tour. I think individual 72 holes is what I really like for mm-hmm. professional golf, for big-time events. Now, how many of those events are there for that? I don't know. But I do think team golf would be really cool. I just It just has to land properly. It's interesting. I think it was – I think it was flushing it. The Twitter account um, who, who covers live extensively. Um, it, it, I wouldn't necessarily call him pro live, but definitely, you know, I, I guess tries to see both sides fairly and, and often is, you know, is supportive of, of what's live doing, what live is doing um, over the weekend was just consistently saying this was a super cool finish. Live needs to lean into this. It needs to become all about team golf. It needs to become all about, um, you know, home games like, you know, Ripper just got to play in front of the Australian crowd and what he's laying out. I don't disagree with like what I just watched. I was like, that was electric, but I just don't know if that's congruent with elite professional golf, like going all the way in on a team concept. How do you sell that to guys like John Rom or even like Cam Smith? Or who, he's been sold on it. <laughs> but, but, but that, I, I, I guess the point being is like they, they're sold on this hybrid concept. And, it, and it, let's say you said, wow, this was super successful. Let's go all the way in on this team thing like and just really not even care about the individual side of the competition at all. Like we're going to make this all about teams. We're going to have home games. And, and, and you know, that's going to be the focus of this competition. I don't like I don't think that works if you have guys that are still trying to play at the highest level on an individual front, play in majors, things like that. Like, was it super cool to see a guy like Cam Smith who was out of the individual running this weekend, you know, keep playing hard because he wanted to get in the playoff and win this in front of the Aussie fans for Ripper? Yes, it was. But like, I don't know that you can pitch, you know, um, like, you know, Victor Hovland's a name that's been floated that like are you, are you going to get Victor Hovland to round up a bunch of Scandinavian players and then go that's play the problem. Like, where? That's like, the problem. I don't know if that works. That's that, that to me is the issue is, you know, let's just even use uh, players from the United States as an example. So 
uh, pick a player, pick a pot, top player. So yeah. maybe Max Homa. Okay, let's say he's a Scottsdale guy. So you could probably round up four dudes from Scottsdale, but are they the top four players of a that that deserve to be on the team? I don't know, but you would say Wyndham Clark, Max Homa. Uh, who else lives there? Joel Damon. Um, who else lives in Scottsdale? John Rahm. But yeah. those four on a team, and and so that would be their home game. And then you go to Dallas, where you got. Jordan, Scotty, Siwoo Kim, Siwoo in Dallas. Uh, <laughs> well, but I'd almost, go, I'd almost go in a different direction. Like I would say, like, that would let's be just, a home game, well, though. Is the way I see. It's like everybody then comes and plays on their home turf. It's their home event. But, but I guess, and, and and I agree with that. But I'm almost saying, like, to go back to your point that you made. That this Adelaide, that Australia is a very unique place. It's like you almost like if you if you love this this weekend, then you say to yourself, "How do we replicate that in other places?" It's like you almost have to just have one U.S. team and go play home games at Beth Page Black every year and get the New York fans to come out and support Jordan, JT, Scotty, and Max Homa. <laughs> the and, problem and, is we we have too many golfers you can't just have exactly I mean, we have 200 pga tour cards right now you're saying one u.s team i mean that's that's the big problem in australia why it's so successful this week it, it's because it has the backing from saudi and the money to go in there to bring these players over there all the you know how many of those players never went and supported Australia golf besides a few, you know, like it's only a couple of totally. guys that have really gone over there and played because the money wasn't right or didn't fit their schedule. Australia, from what I understand, ha- doesn't have the financial backing to be able to support a PGA Tour event, which is a $10 million purse or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And why would anybody from the United States company want to send all of – I guess they, it would be pretty cool if they would – to bring all of their business over – to Australia, which would be great, but the commercials and all that doesn't make sense. So there's a lot of a lot of things that don't make sense about it, but we want it to make sense, right? Well, totally. I I, th- I think where I end up, where my head goes on this is like if you like if if we all really like this version of this, then you're you're, you're saying live could be very successful. It's a very if it's a very niche thing. Like like think about the team we're talking about here. It's the it's your best case scenario, and it's Cam Smith. Mark Leishman, Matt Jones, and Lucas Herbert. Like, I mean, if, if that's your best case scenario, I just don't know. You know, you tell tell me what other market or you know, collect. I mean, you know, if you have a Spanish team, I guess like you know where where it's John Rom and and Sergio Garcia, and, you know, uh, David Pooch, I think is Spanish. Like, I, I just I don't you know. I, I I really I thought this was really compelling and I like the idea of home games and like may, maybe you know you go to um you know the same venue that hosted the South African Open um I think it was Johannesburg where Max and JT played this last year and that's a home game for Stinger and, but do you and, get and the crowds though like I, I don't get, know I, I don't think I mean, you do I I don't yeah. I really don't think you get the crowds like you I, I think you'll get those crowds in Ireland you'll get those crowds in yeah. maybe Scotland. That could be cool. Uh, you know, or England. I, I think you get those types of crowds. Like British team. Not, maybe not quite the numbers that they did, but you get, you know, you at least get some legit crowds. You know, I, I think that's been the one thing that you always see the screenshots of the random hole where there's nobody on it. Well, that's any tour event. You it, it, All the crowds fall on the top players. So, um it, it's kind of tough to to just take screenshots of certain different types, but there are certain events on the web that's ha- they've had nobody. But also the tour, they they have similar events. Well, I I, th- I think the thing that's intriguing about it to me, like like there's something there. It, it's essentially what you're trying to do is create a bunch of mini Ryder Cup vibes, where it's like we're all going to back this thing because we have a connection to it. You know, like it, it's different from rooting from a certain player because you like the way they play golf or you have some good sort TV. Of- it's good, good TV. TV and it's high energy and it's, good and it's TV. you know, it say what you buzz. want about it. You feel it. It's why it's, people like football games. <laughs> you can exactly. You feel. It's, it's tribal. You know, yeah. it's like, see, it's like, you know, soccer, you know, like English Premier League where each, you know, it's all these people from these certain set areas, you know, rooting for their, their, their team. And, and there, there's a sort of tribal connection to it. But I, I just, you know, I, I guess it's, it's, if that's the thing you're going for, I, I 100% think it's a compelling product. 
I just don't know then how you sell elite talents on that because you're basically boxing them into, okay, your whole professional existence now is just playing team events that have no, you know, long-term bearing on, you know, what you could do at an individual level, which is the reason why all these guys took up the game in the first place. And, and I don't know how you solve for that. And, and, and maybe, maybe that's one way as negotiations continue between the PGA tour and the PIF, and they try to kind of fit these things in maybe, you know, and they, and they take the TGL and they're trying to, you know, oh, shoot gosh. Us. don't get me started about yeah. TGL. <laughs> <laughs> but like maybe, maybe they take some pages from that and they're like, you know, what we should do is we really should create like a series of national teams and do a bunch of stuff in these off seasons when we don't have events yeah. where we go and play home games. And that's how this thing works. But I, I just, I was both watching this this weekend and seeing, you know, guys like flushing it and others talking, Talking about how great this was and wholeheartedly agreeing with it while also saying I don't that's not sustainable for elite individually minded tour pros it just doesn't work it sure would be really cool to see the top however many dudes 75 whatever it is playing over there can you imagine in a team right. concept like I think it would be awesome but the we just have got to find a way to unify the game again to get all these players back playing on the same field. And I don't know what the solution is going to be. Um, If we had a magic ball and maybe we haven't even gotten to Rory. (laughs) He won this week, but we haven't even talked about him getting back onto the policy board yet. Yes. But I think Rory's going to finish up this week. He's going to think team golf. Cool. Like it. I think a lot of people also think team golf can work, but how does it work? And you and then the guys like Rory, they see Adelaide and they say, wow, what a what an amazing place. We've got to make it a more global tour. But how do you make the fans really care about certain events? And right now we have so many events where it's just hard as a fan to get tuned in every week to just like, OK, same storyline. And it's nothing to really keep track of the FedEx Cup. It's two twenty three hundred point lead right now that nobody really cares about. How do you make the fans care? Get the guys back playing together, make the events really matter and make it really good TV like we saw in Australia with the back swings like you're talking about. I think that is it's crazy. That's why the Ryder Cup's so dang cool, man. Um, you just got to make less events somehow and 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 make these events really matter um, for this shrunken up tour that I think needs to be about 100 guys. And then you have a big elongated second tour. Uh, that that has a that you can make a living off of four million dollar purses. Yeah, I mean, and, and look, and if you're if you're yelling at your computer screen and or headphones right now, saying the Olympics, that's what the Olympics is. That's not the whole point of this is home games. Like Australia was a home game for Ripper this weekend, and that's what brought all these fans out. Now they are like you know, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a, of a comparison. That's like going to Lambeau Field to play the Packers or something, or Arrowhead to play the Chiefs. Like that's as good as it gets. But uh, you know, I think uh, put together a good American team and take them, you know, put them in front of the fans and Beth Page. Like that'd be pretty electric. Or or and I'm, there are a lot of other places you could replicate that. But um, yeah, I, I just think you know we we kind of we we. Um, I, uh, in in this process, these last few years of of trying to figure out what the what the future professional golf was going to look like, uh, you know, there was there there was I think there was was a report that was done early on by the group that was competing with the Saudis um, for the the what was the PGL I think it was called where where they did this sort of financial analysis and said they could generate value of like multiple Ryder Cups within a year and they kind of got laughed out of the boardroom and then then we we all kind of. Laughed at Taylor Gooch when he taught when he compared the the atmosphere of one of the live events, you know, maybe it was like London or something like that, to like winning a Ryder Cup. Now that was laughable in and of itself, but I think there is something there to creating little mini national teams and and and, and if like if you're gonna do the team concept, give us a reason to root for these teams. That's that has not, to make sense, right? Exactly. Like, you have I'm, to not, I'm not going to wear a high flyer cape, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like give me a reason to root for these guys, you know, and yeah. they've done that a little bit, but like give them a home game too, I think is the point. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, it's cool though. Uh, I, I think for, as far as the growing the game aspect of, of what has been preached from both tours. And I think everybody's laughed a little bit about the growing the game side from uh, the live standpoint, because it's just hard to look past the guaranteed money that they took. 
But you got to love the grow the game aspect for Australia this week. I mean, I just sitting here just punching some numbers on how many Australians play golf. Three and a half million Australians play golf. And the number is kind of upticking similar to where, you know, a lot of the world right now, the golf is a very popular game that continues to become more popular. Now, how do you make these these new players that are just now getting into the game and love it? How do you make them care about the professional game? It's like, well, bring it to them. Well, it, yes and no. Like, that's that's great. It works certain places. Um, and the way Liv is designed right now, the club atmosphere, the really high energy. Yeah, that's kind of what the modern uh, – not modern, but more of the millennial Gen Z person likes. And kind of my TikTok brain turns on. It's like, yeah, I do kind of like that. But I don't know if I could ever turn it on the TV and listen to that and – and, and make much sense of it on a broadcast. Yeah, no, I, fair. I, I think um, somewhat of the same topic, uh, I think it was Kyle Porter who was tweeting about live in the early goings and, and was saying it, it's the uh, the second most consequential golf that we've watched this week that was played in Australia, referring, of course, to No Laying Up's uh, Tourist Sauce series that, that has dropped the first two episodes. And, and by the way, I mean – that is that that is so well done uh that, that and, and that by the way and i mean i mean this is a high compliment that is not a series about golf that's a series where golf happens to be played but what they do artistically and and, and showcasing a place truly amazing stuff but as part of that they, they kind of reference that golf hungry crowd in australia and the respect they have for the game um that you know maybe you know you you tune in for live and you see a bunch of people you know partying and throwing water bottles they're hitting caddies and heads and things like that and you, and you kind of it, it feels reductive whereas there is a real deep you know appreciation for not only just you know the fun parts of the game but just the history of the game itself that exists in that nation and so it, it may be harder than it seems to go just say oh let's just run that blueprint in this country or that country or that country you know I, I don't know if it will work I mean I, I do think though that there is just something to giving us a reason to root for a team, you know, put these guys together and and make it nationalistic, man. Like you're going to get people to watch for that reason. Like yeah. otherwise, I just I don't think it I don't think it works. So I mean, just think about it though. The PJ Tour. I mean, they're changing things, but man, they how many years went by where they didn't change anything besides just kind of making the purses just do this just to keep everybody happy, but. 72 holes of golf and turning on the TV at 3 p.m. was, you know, it seemed to be fine. But now they're to this point now. I mean, you look at across all the different sports leagues, everybody's evolving. Yes. I mean, look at baseball. Look what they've done, like with the pitch clock, making the game go quicker, making it more consumable for the fan. NFL, uh, even college football, I, I would say before NFL, they're getting into a two minute. Um, they're adding the two minute, like just like the NFL has to mm-hmm. create more action for the ends of the games for a team to come back and the, and the clock to stop. So I love changing and adding different things. And I think the college football has done a good job of that. Mm-hmm. The tour hasn't really figured out what is going to make golf more interesting. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's, you know, uh, you, you wonder what's being discussed in some of these negotiations and, and, and what, you know, the, the, the grand vision is and then, and then what is, is being kind of negotiated back and forth and hammered out and watered down. I think, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, because I, I think there is a world in which, and we talked about this a couple of months ago where there, where this platinum tour looks really, really cool, where it's your four majors. It's a, it's a, a couple of additional, you know, it's, it's the players championship, it's you know you, you keep some equivalent of the tour championship or some marquee end of season fall event. Um, it's a couple of the big player hosted invitationals. So you you know keep the Genesis with Tiger Memorial with Jack. You know probably the API things like that. And then it's maybe a mix of these you know team events interspersed within there that are you know focused on like here's here's a rooting interest for your collection of guys that are now uniting and playing for the same you know banner you know and, and a lot of it probably is you know regional sorts of 
reasons to root for these teams. Um, and then around that is is whatever the, um, the 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 underneath the platinum tour is the regular PGA tour, the Corn Ferry tour equivalent, where there are you know upstarts and and young guys that are that are playing their way into this you know higher level at some point but just you know some of those kind of because I, I i think there's going to be more cutthroat on that like in my opinion it's got to be you know if it's if there's 144 dudes on that tour it's you know 20 guys maybe 15 make it to the platinum tour with 15 rolling off or 20 rolling off it's it makes it to where if you right. once you get up to that platinum tour and you play well and you, and you keep playing well you stay there but you got to play real good to get and, but I wanted to make it to where you can have a, a decent living. You make the port purses sure. somewhere between that three to six million dollar range, which is what they used to be. And it's probably right. what the right market reflected it. too, though, right? Hundred percent agreed with that. And I think too, we've heard a lot of guys talk about, you know, the return on investment that SSG expects. You know, hey, they're putting all this money into it. Like, you know, we're gonna have to get creative and we're gonna have to be able to do things that maybe we weren't comfortable with before. Like, I'd love to see like give us a reason to care about the upstart guys on the the you know the corn fairy tour equivalent or whatever the tour that is that sits beneath. Like give us hard knocks. Like like in between, you know, these guys that maybe okay in the past I wouldn't want to do a bunch of stuff for media. It's like here's kind of the deal is, you know, we're gonna Take this television, make this into a television show, make this something that you watch between these events, you know, where that competition's happening. And yes, you're going to have to do a little bit of this type of stuff, but it's going to come back to you in the form of, you know, money made from the series or, or, or more marketing opportunities, you know, whatever that looks like. Like, give us a reason to care about these guys. So then you care about. You care about the guys at the top because they're the superstars. You already know about them. And then you find a reason to care about these guys because they're fighting this sort of battle on the on, the, on this sort of line of like, am I going to make it to the next mm-hmm. level with a hard knocks t- style of programming? I mean, that's not fleshed out all the way, but I just think that there is, you know, you, you got for better or worse, it, it has to be about more than just the game of golf. And, and I think if you look around the whole landscape these days and you see what people are kind of flocking to in the golf content lane, it's a lot of these you know, YouTube content creators that are just like, Hey, come along with me as I play an entire round of golf. And I'm going to tell you everything I'm thinking. And, and, and it's, I think that form of access, if we normalize that a little more, all of a sudden you are, you're, you're going beyond the core golf audience that's sort of aging out and you're, and you're bringing in new people who have like a connection to the game and, and an interest that's on a human, you know, a human level, a human interest sort of deal. So I don't know. I I think that that there. I hope that there are creative minds in those rooms that are, um, you there know, pushing for those types of things. <laughs> it yeah. Needs to be. I, I think the biggest mistake for for 2025 is to roll out the exact same thing. Yeah. I, I, I think there just needs to continue to be big time changes. Like just blow the thing up. Needs blown up because. We were not until you bring all the players back, which needs to happen. And I don't, I, I for a long time was like, I don't know. But now I'm like, whatever. I, I'm over it. They, they got their money. These guys now are getting equity on the PGA Tour, and that was just announced, which we can we can talk about if you'd like. But th- that to me, it's like, all right, these guys got paid. They got paid. Let's just try to figure out to get these guys back together. I, I want to delve into a piece of that that you touched on already, which is um, Rory's return, or, or I don't know if it's confirmed yet, but but coming back on the policy board. And I'd, I'd heard, heard rumors of that for quite some time, and I don't know if you'd heard the same rumors, but I was like, I, but then we heard the rumor about oh, Rory's going to live for nine hundred million dollars, <laughs> reported well, by the Telegram, which is a business insider <laughs> journal in London. So I'm like, oh my god. He's gone. <laughs> so all these rumors, I didn't know what was true. Well, the, the one rumor I heard, and I'm curious to your take on this, and I'm not going to name the player, but I, I just heard that, that he was talking to someone and he basically said, hey, look, there's, I'm not going to let this guy ruin the future of the tour for me, uh, referring to another, <laughs> another player that's out there. And 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 I'll, I'll just leave that at what it is. But, God, but you made I, it too obvious, I think. <laughs> <laughs> just that guy that guy is, is too obvious man yeah dude i mean it's kind of obvious <laughs> <laughs> i don't know whether or not we're gonna cut this yeah th- these are these are more your relationships than mine i maybe i maybe i should cut this but i mean i i, I mean 
Well, I mean, he said it himself. I mean, this all stuff's been reported on. It's uh, not like it's. Like, I, I, mean, I don't know if Roy's been quoted. It's like if this guy. <laughs> right, right. I don't. This is none of this is verbatim. Big disclaimer here. This is all scuttlebutt. This is all. I don't, even, I don't even know if this. I haven't heard that rumor, but I'm just. I don't think it's. I don't think it's fair to to not. No. <laughs> this is not this, that was not a Roy McElroy quote. This is this is all Charlie Hume rampant speculation. Big, 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 big disclaimer. This all comes back on me. Um, I, I guess I, I, my intent there was not to, uh, you know, position Rory as this like gossip or this like vindictive guy. My, my intent there was to essentially um, try to try to trace the 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 evolution that Rory's done because he's just gone in so many different directions it seems like in terms of thought processes of being this guy that was all the way out there for the tour and 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 you know kind of really strongly re- rebutting live and then when when the the deal was announced last year you know feeling betrayed in a lot of ways we saw that on full swing we saw that in a number of different kind of places where it was like well why did i waste a year of my life on that and and also suffer a loss of quality in the golf that i was playing if you were just going to turn out and do a deal with them and then we see him kind of retreat remove himself from the policy board say i'm going to focus on other places and then we see a series of on the record public interviews and statements he made that that where he's warming up to the idea of maybe not live but just guys going and being okay with it i think and it's then, more if he warmed up to realizing that these guys weren't stopping right like yeah like this one like their their pockets were deep yeah and and and, well, and, and just and to to tee this up for you is just like now he's at a place where he wants back on the policy board and, and i guess my very open ended question there is like what do you make of all this <laughs> from just Rory's just Rory's last year and a half, maybe two years plus of, of where his, where his head's gone and 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 the, the the statements he's made on the future of the pro game? You know, I I understand from a career standpoint and all of the PR stuff that he had gone through, being the face, and then having that all happen, but. Yeah, it's got to be a little frustrating for the guys in the room that are like, okay, we've been taking these phone calls for how many months now since the, when did he get off the policy board? Because I had heard, I had heard that he got off the policy board at the Canadian open. I I heard he said I was done, but I I think it was a little later than that. I think it was officially at the end of the year, like in the fall, yeah. but but that that he'd almost had left it in an acting capacity around. Because Jordan the, took it. Jordan took his spot. Exactly. And I think it sounds like you know better than I did. I what what I heard was just Jordan was kind of working his way into that role from that point on. Yeah, because uh, Jordan didn't he I mean, dude, he's just had his second baby. He didn't have, he doesn't have time for this, but he also is a very smart dude. Probably one of the smarter guys that I know he would be a CEO if he wasn't a, a professional golfer. That's how impressive he is. When you talk to him just about stuff like this, he understands mm-hmm. it at a, not to say that he should be running the tour, but he's a good guy to have on the yeah. policy board uh, during this time. But man, uh, you know, Tiger, Patrick Cantlay, Jordan, Adam Scott, all of these players that have taken all of these calls and, and been a part of, of the SSG and vetting the equity and, and getting the tour in a position to not <laughs> continue to lose members. And now Rory comes in and is like, hey, here's the idea. It's like no idea is a bad idea. And these guys are like, dude, we've been here. Like what, you want to, want, to, want to know the run of show of how these things go? And But maybe looking at this with – you know from – a different point of view. It's like, maybe you do need somebody, a disruptor now to be like, okay, this is where we should go. And somebody that should, should be like, all right, guys, let's move this thing to exactly kind of the things that we've been talking about, which is make changes and, and make the tournaments that are being played matter, put them in places that make sense, make the playoffs make sense. (laughs) You know, let's make, let's go to Chicago every year. Why are we at East? Like every single tour championship, why are we going to Pebble beach for the tour champion? Like let's think outside the box. We have some of the best golf courses in the world and we find a way to 
not figure out a way to go to our biggest markets too. It's just, to me, there, it, you just have to look at it from a big picture thing. And maybe Roy is our big picture guy after we had all of these guys handle all the, uh, all the business to get us into a point to where these conversations now of let's, let's think outside the box. Let's look at the PGA Tour, not only for next year, but what's it going to look like 20 years from now? I, I think that is perfectly stated in terms of like, that's the reason why you get Rory back on the policy board is to have a, a counterbalanced voice that like, look, we've been driving in one direction. It seems like everyone to a large degree is on the same page. Um, but then you bring in a guy who maybe has moved around a lot in terms of his opinions, but now was kind of on a, on an opposing side. And so hopefully I guess the downside of that, of course, is that, it, it's stymies progress. You know, you, then you're having a lot of discussion about what should we do instead of like, Hey, we're all in agreement. This is the thing we should do. And now we have to take that and negotiate with this other side to figure out how it all comes together. And now it's like, it's, we have to figure out what we are trying to do before we even go to that other side. And so that that's what I worry about with them coming back on and, and just wondering where they're going to all net out. But, but yeah. I, I, I do think like net net, like the guy who is, you know, to your point on 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 the 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 payouts, you know these sort of solidarity solidarity payouts, whatever you want to call them. Like he's number two on the list behind Tiger. Like that guy should have a large voice in the room if he is your number two guy in terms of value to the tour. If he's, he's gonna passionate stay, about it, he, yeah. he you can hear it when he talks when when he's answered the questions about what he wants the game to look like, and I think the meeting that he took with the officer just about like, what are you trying to blow this thing up? Just even meeting with him and just hearing where he thinks the game should go. And, and I think having a guy like Rory being on the policy board side, it you have to have him there. You can't have him spit out his thoughts to the media every single week and have them just be on deaf ears. Totally and, agreed. and, and every week now the policy board it sees a new quote from Rory. It's like, well, dude, why'd you leave? You know, like, that was, like you were here to be able to help us make those changes. And I think when we've seen that, you know, 2025 maybe isn't early enough or soon enough to make all these changes. I, I've seen that and read that uh, different places that it's just too quick of a turnaround to do that. But Rory's like, no, nope. This needs to start happening faster. And I think there's people in the room at the tour that know that needs to happen. But gosh, it's I, the it was the equity thing where that was the big thing to try to figure out how to get the players to come back. But it just has to ha it has to happen. These players have got to be playing on the same same uh, same tournaments again. We can't have <laughs> golf's not big enough. We figured that out with ratings now that it's just it ain't it uh, with, with these guys separated. I, I think that and I think everyone is feeling fatigue, like on both tours, you're hearing both guys say, it, you know, on, on, on both sides of it. And, and I guess the hope is that there's been enough of competitive posturing. And now we're all just like, hey, can we just bring this thing back together one way or another? Like we 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 follow live. We we don't care. We follow the, we follow it for the bits. We follow it for like the fun <laughs> bits. And, and honestly, and it's nothing against these guys. Their play, I, I, I think so many of those players are world class players. I just don't care about these players being split, and then them, the Live Golf Tour, saying that this is a better tour than the PGA Tour. You're just never going to sell me on that when, when you, when it's broken up into pieces like this. I hundred percent agree. Like I, I think even looking at this weekend, you know. I'm sure Brennan Steele is a super nice guy. Hell like, of a player. Brennan's unbelievable play. at golf. But, like, but I like, is that, you know, you, you go down to Australia and like, and, and this is, you know, you're, you're the, in, the event with the most amount of eyeballs on it in terms of what we're being sold on the watering hole. Like, and that's the guy who wins a tournament. Like they can't be thrilled with that. Now they salvage it through the team vehicle. And that's why I think all the chatter has been around that. <laughs> yeah. Cause and, the well, leaderboard well, was gross, right? For a bit. It, it was it was gross on both tours, and and yeah. I think that nothing. And, and I get that. Okay, Zurich Zurich didn't have a great field to start with. It wasn't like we were going to get some. You know, everyone's fingers are crossed. Like, <laughs> please, Rory and Shane win this thing, and it was looking uh, a little doubtful. I for don't second. know. <laughs> some of us wanted Davis Thompson and Andrew Novak to win, but I don't know. <laughs> I will say, uh, while my team of Colin Morikawa and Kurt Kitayama, I think we actually ended up finishing the same position. We'll we'll get to one and done. I was I was rooting hard for. 
Patrick Fishburne and Zach Blair because um, uh, I, I think we've noted this in the podcast a number of times. Patrick Fishburne was my playing partner in the uh, the UNC Health Championship Corn He's Ferry a big Tour guy, program. Huh? Big dude. I, Looks like I've a seen his player. name for years, whether it was Monday qualifiers, corn fair, and I've never met him, never seen him in person. And when I saw the screenshot that uh, you sent me of of them two with like the height, I was like, oh my gosh, he's a big dude. Does he hammer it? Dude, he hit uh they they had this super long par three. I forget which hole at Raleigh CC it was. It was on the front nine. I want to say maybe like six or seven. It was playing like 280. Uh, as a part of three, 285 or something like that, and just cruised a little three iron, two iron into the green, stopped it. Like greens were firm, yeah. no problem at all. And I was like, whoa, this guy is. <laughs> and, 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 and it, it was heat. I mean, he, he could hit the ball a long way. And, and I think his game, the way he played today, kind of aligned with like he, he hit the ball a mile, but he was a, the driving accuracy was kind of off and on. Um, and he didn't put it great. I mean, it's a prime. So he probably didn't care, but it, it's looked like the first couple rounds this week to get him in contention. He putted great. So I, I was pulling hard for him um, to hopefully see him get it done. Um, also fun, fun smiley show fact at the same time I was out there, you know, watching Patrick Fishburne smash the ball around the yard. You were interviewing Jordan Spieth for like our sixth ever episode on the show. Oh, so how about it? How about that? Go rewatch you go. that on YouTube. We re-released that on YouTube. That was pre YouTube. So that's a little, that's a fun little inside the smiley show, the making of it? right there. Yeah. Yeah. How about it? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they obviously, they had, they had that double at 17, 17 was playing tough today. Um, and, and then, I mean, I, um, I, I by the way, I'm going to uh, back into like sound the alarm. Like remember in the uh, full swing episode with Rory when he got into the locker room and Brooks had just, I think he was just yes. about to win at the PGA and he gets with his agent and Harry diamond. And he says to him, he's like, I, I think we just need to blow this thing up and just completely go rework, remodel the golf swing. Buddy, that's where I'm at. Can you play that? Can you get that sound? from from full swing to where we can press the button like you're able to do it on your soundboard yes you could press that button right now i'm in a i went from couldn't have been in a better golf headspace a week and a half ago to where i'm like blow it up blow oh, it up I, blow it up but guess what we still won five and three <laughs> Boom. season okay, long so, member member match wow play, this was this we was won a, five and three let's this, go this <laughs> took a turn i thought you were talking about rory mcelroy for for a bit there but no, no we're you're talking, talking about, about the shoal creek season long match play congratulations by the way five and sorry three. sorry i have to like turn the wheels on that but no no no, no. Uh, you we, were talking, talking about rory a little bit and it just got my head spinning about how 17 was playing hard and where i would have hit a four iron day on 17 you don't even want to know Dude, I lost <laughs> I lost the capability to hit really any iron, but especially long irons. I went from shooting I shot 34 and our on nine holes and our our men's league uh on Thursday night and was like I'm I'm going to I'm going to be a scratch. Like I'm going to be so good. Turn around the next day, fired off a cool 84 in our uh, gross match play. Just like, like, and honestly, it was a really good 84. Like, yeah. it was, it was mm -hmm. like, and yep. it, it, it was honestly, it was a difference between the two tees. Like, we play the 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 white tees for uh for for men's league, and we played the tips for for the match play. And it was just like the difference between just flipping in like a sand wedge or a gap wedge on every hole. And it's like, Oh, you have to hit a real iron here. And like, and, and, and I'm working on as documented in our swing notes segment, which we need to bring back at some point, I'm working on some stuff. There are a lot of thoughts going on in my head. I, I'm not in a good place. I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm definitely humping the ball. And, and I'm trying to, and I'm I'm coming like I'm doing this thing where like I'm like I'm coming over the top I'm trying to save it and then I'm like I'm hitting I probably hit like eight to ten half shanks. How's your it. How's your grip feel when you set up to the ball? So I've been when working you, on the grip a lot too. Like when you like, look down at it and you feel like and you feel your grip, does everything look good to your eye? It 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 does, and and I've gotten comfortable there. It's it's more it's more of like I can't. I have this weird thing where like, I don't know how I'm going to get the ball to go left. Like, I just feel like no matter what I do, I'm just going to just hit the big high. Uh. And oh, so yeah. then I'm trying, I'm trying to like save it, but then I'm coming more over the top. And then, and then that's where it's like, if, if I, if I get it right, it's still going right. Yep. But if I get it wrong, I'm shanking it. 
And, yeah. and it's 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 a welcome. slowly you're the, lonely you're, place. You're, you're, you're <laughs> welcome to uh, Hotel Haya. Can I please? Would you like one or would you like two room keys? And we're giving you zero complimentary waters because all you can do is you open the window and you jump out the hotel because it's not a fun hotel at all. Oh man! So uh, I'll tell you right now, my grip when I hold the when I hold the grip, it feels like I'm holding a frying pan. That's how bad it feels. Okay. Okay. That's how bad it feels. And then I, I get it to the top and I'm already thinking the same thing because my problem right now, I'm, I'm already, I've always been a steep, like my, I've always been steeper when you look at the angle of attack. So I have right now I'm steep and then I'm side bending too early. And Michael Neff, he said Mm. that when we had our gears thing, if if you want to go and try to learn some stuff about just body mechanics and 3d um, capture Stuff gears is a really great place first off to get a lesson, but go watch Michael that Neff, YouTube episode. So he good. said the worst thing you could do is side bend early out of the top, and I I am doing that right now because I'm I'm trying so hard to not hit it right that I get to the top and I'm just I'm I'm throwing it this way because and all it's do, making it do is making me become more steeper for a player who's already steep with just a normal swing. So I'm going from steep to steep and now I'm left. So I, I, I've gone from driving down the highway <laughs> straight to now I'm heading towards the median, but now <laughs> the two tires in the back are off its wheels. And so what are you going to do? Like you can't, tr- I got on a dog left today and I said, how am I going to hit this around the corner? Not first off, not if I do try to sling it left, how am I not going to hook it? But if if I if I don't try to hook it or if I try to save it late, how am I not going to hit it out of bounds right? And so I'm like, oh god, it is just it's nightmare fuel, and I blow up, blow it all up. So click the button, <laughs> and I know what to do. That's the thing. I know what I need to do. Like I need to get my tilts right. If I can get my tilts right and keep hand depth in the downswing, to where my hands are a little bit more behind me and my shoulders are doing more. This because I used to feel this in my downswing, left shoulder down, right shoulder high, but mm. I was able to tilt the shaft to where I was able to get the grip to be lower and then have the club coming in this way, and I'd still be able to hit it up in the air. And right now, left shoulder's up. Now my hand path is way out this way. Done. You're done. <laughs> this this feels like this feels a little bit like immersion therapy because you're going through this and obviously I'm not let me talk it out same, <laughs> yeah no this is this is help this is helping me feel like I'm not in a, in a, uh, alone in a dark place that I'm never going to get out of the strange thing for me and I don't know if it's, it sounds like it's not for you because but it, it's the tee helps the, I'm hitting it so good off the tee like I, I I am hitting it on a string with my good. driver and my three wood and, and 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 then. It's, but it's everything that happens between there and around the green. I get up around the green. I get up and down. I get up and down from anywhere around the green. I'm putting it so good right now, but it's just everything in between the T and around the green is just pure nightmare fuel. I mean, I will shank a wedge. I'll shank a full wedge. Like, I'm so odd if you're driving it good. Like to be I, I shaking can, wedges and, and, and the, the, the grip feels so good off the tee. The tempo feels so good. Like I, I can hit it with it, which is, which the weird thing is that I've never had this in my life. I've been so erratic off the tee right now. I'm like, I know exactly where I'm hitting it, but it's just when I go over the ball in the fairway and, and, it, and it's part of, it's like, it's just, I'm going through a lot of checkpoints. I think, I think it's, it's, just, there's a lot of thoughts going on in my head, but I'm trying to kind of, get this elbow feeling more inside because because i was steep too like you as we documented my hands were high and then i'm coming over the top of the ball and so i'm trying to kind of get you know shallow it a little bit more and and get this get this arm aside but then i kind of I, I don't if, if i if if i don't get any side bend if i don't side bend enough and i kind of stand up on it and then i move toward it and then i'm trying to bring my hands back over to get it left and then i'm just like throwing the hosel right at the golf ball and it's just, just like these little mm. piss rocket line drives to the right that I can't get out of. I try, try getting better tempo. I've tried everything. I, at this point right now, what I'm thinking of doing is just quitting, quitting, <laughs> quitting. But if I'm not allowed to quit, 
because I have to play Tobacco Road this weekend, which I is one of my favorite places on earth, and I'm like afraid I'm gonna ruin it. But I th- I think I'm I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play like a 30 to 40 yard fade and just take it to the top and then just don't release my hands at all and just turn through it steep and just at least I'll know I'll square the club face and it's just gonna go start at left and it's gonna balloon to the right. I'll take two extra clubs and and I'll just oh, I'll just God. hold and pray. That's where I'm living least- right now, and it's such a terrible place <laughs> to be living. I'm hitting – it, like I'm not even close to my full numbers. It's so frustrating. It, I just feel like I'm hitting everything like 10 yards short of what I normally do, <laughs> which is not great. Skull not fan. Great. Golly, right, God bless that, it. We're, that, that was, was our good. therapy session. That was a we're good done. therapy Sorry. session. <laughs> and, and with all that being said, we still won five and three. I just wanted yeah, was, to – That's amazing. <laughs> and, and, and be honest, I wasn't going to win the season-long match play at Hope Valley anyway, and I really care about defending our men's league championship. So it happened the correct way. So that it is what it is. Um, what should we golly that was that was very helpful uh should we where do we go from here we yeah what else you have in the docket i mean i got nothing else on my end i got out i got out my golf problems i i I, my one and done we kind of discussed besides the only thing i wanted to say there was that davis thompson and andrew novak let me down i yeah i was thinking in my head because they were in the second last group going into the last uh into the third day and then i look later in the day and they were they were one under through like nine or 10 and, and and they went from being in the second to last group to second to last. That's how crazy that format is in the best ball day. You can go from second to last group being one under through 10 and being in second to last. I was like, Oh my God, that is just, cause I, I would have loved to pick a like kind of a rando winner. Cause mm-hmm. that if you pick the rabbit out of the hat at, at the Zurich and, and got it right. Uh, besides picking a top player like Rory and, if, if if you would have had Martin Trainer and Chad Ramey this week, hell yeah. Like that, that is sick. <laughs> that would have been a deep, deep cut. I think Shane Lowry was the play this week. Cause I don't know that I would well, unless I think did one of us use Shane Lowry early on? I couldn't remember Florida if swing. Did or not. I don't think we did. Shane Lowry would have been the right play this week. Um 100%. Here's, the other, here's the other thing I'm trying to figure out is I know that I know that the winners get four hundred FedEx Cup points, but I'm I don't know that the rest of the field gets FedEx Cup points. I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, they do. They do? Because it's diluted. What, what I was going to say is we both of our teams finished T23 at 18 under. Like, I'm wondering if we just call this thing a wash because I'm having a heck of a time trying to figure out <laughs> what what the projected points just, were if, if for we this tie, week. Just call it a wash. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll I don't pick it know up next what, week, which yeah. is. <laughs> Well, Where's no, next? Hey, is it TPC Craig Ranch? It's TPC Craig Ranch week. Oh, I gotta go. Let me hit some air horns. I'm gonna insert <laughs> some air horns here. It's TPC. It's Smiley's favorite week of the year. TPC Craig Ranch week. Um, yeah, let's just get right into that. Let's make these one and done picks, and then call it a day. Because I feel like we've we've done just about everything else. Can can, can we talk through this a little bit? Because. What what profile player do you like here? Just anybody, anybody who's good at golf because you're just hitting off of living AstroTurf? Like what what There's, what profile player suits this course? I think I was talking to Scotty about TPC Craig Ranch because he was I was like, oh, so you're not playing that week. <laughs> he was like, I think there's like one or two tee shots you actually have to think about was what he said. <laughs> or maybe maybe I'm using another tour player, um, but I Let's just use Scotty because why not? <laughs> well, he, he uh, finished fifth last year, so I, I'm oh, sure. You don't I mean, say. <laughs> it's shocker. T five for Scotty Scheffler. Um, I I have never played there. I've just we I've need been, to play there. I've been so frustrated we need to, we need watching to do a video on TV there. that I just said, yeah, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I feel like I mean, I feel like first of all, we should go there and do like a, you have to say like five nice things about this course after you play it. Um, to the CJ I, Cup, by the way, can we talk about a company that is to, they've been everywhere, buddy? <laughs> you know what I had earlier tonight? Uh, nine BB Go dumplings. They they work. Oh, it, it worked. Those are good. They they own that company. C- Those are so good. C- CJ Foods owns BBGo, and they've infiltrated my brain via their very cool style logo and their uh, BBGo go 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 BBGo go ads <laughs> that are on every PGA Tour event. And I was grocery shopping with my son on Saturday, which is delightful, by the way. I, I was solo dad this weekend. I was I was oh, gosh. alone on Walker Island, no safety help, just 
one-on-one coverage, just getting torched all weekend long by my one and a half year old son. We had a lot of fun, but I am exhausted. And uh, my wife is a saint for working three 12 hour back-to-backs while pregnant, but um, I I need help. I need more help (laughs) over the weekend. It's very, very hard. Uh, But yeah. So anyway, that's, that's a nice tangent, but yes, we were, we were grocery shopping together and we were going to the frozen foods aisle and I said, Oh, baby go. Let's try some of those. And I had them for dinner tonight. They were delicious. So that's a free ad for uh, BB Go uh, and for, for CJ Foods and the CJ Cup. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, man. so the CJ Cup and Byron Nelson. Um, all right. So I, it's my first pick this week. Is it? Um, okay. It is my pick this week. And looking at last year's leaderboard, I'm kind of surprised Austin Eckroat's not playing this week because he was T2 yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, he was. He was T2. And he's been playing good the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is going to be a perfect time to look to use him. And then I went and looked at the field list. He's not in the field, um, which doesn't make a ton of sense to me. But I don't know. Maybe he just, maybe he's playing. Um, because the week following after Byron is Wells Fargo, right? And then and then PGA. <laughs> this is such a crapshoot week, man. These guys are so many under par last year. Twenty three. If you if you shot, here we go. If you were ten under par, what do you think they got you last year? Well, I mean, no. I'm I'm cheating. I mean, I have, I have the board up. T sixty four. Oh my gosh. So do you, do you just like a guy that can just take it deep? Like, do you got, do you yeah. like a guy that can just like, it's golly. gotta be, I mean, the, the course profile has got to be drive it far, good iron player, pot putter. I mean, it, it's, it is what it is. Right. I mean, I got the, a couple of guys in mind. Who are you the, going with? Well, the, the guy that I'm looking at that I want to pick is Minwoo Lee, but he, but last year he missed a cut. Shot mm. sixty nine seventy five. Mm. Was two over and missed the weekend. So I'm like, I don't know if that's. I mean, the guy who I really want to pick and who I'm probably going to pick is Siwoo because he finished T two last year and uh, and I feel like I feel like is in good form. Um, golly, but I but uh, but I really want to roll the dice on Minwoo, and I just don't know if I have the intestinal fortitude to do it. Um, yeah, let's let's go. Let's plug in Siwoo Kim here. I'm gonna go with Siwoo. <sighs> I was going to take him. Yeah. All right. I, I like Siwoo here. You're going to give me, once I do one little check on this player, okay. on Data Golf, just to see if I'm if I'm checking this off right on a player that's been doing anything recently and ah, not what I wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we're pulling the curtain back, like to see the scientific process that goes behind these picks that we're now uh, mm. five, or I guess we're five for the last. We're only batting 500 now, Smiley. We're five for 10. I did not want to see that. Um, I still think I'm probably going to take him, though, just because okay. it seems like a course fit. Um, give me Luke List. OK, OK. Uh, you, you have Luke list and that, that, that is a, that's a it fits the exact profile guy that if he gets a hot so putter, he gets a hot so putter. Too. I mean, the guy's an insanely good ball striker hits it, hits it far. Can I take, can I take my pick back? Well, you did it last week. So let's just keep the precedent going. All right. Can, let's just erase that little Luke list thing, like little, little editors cut there, uh, whether the editor actually wants to do that or not. Um, uh, My pick for the CJ Cup at (laughs) the CJ Cup Byron Nelson at TPC Craig Ranch is I'm taking Mackenzie Hughes. Oh, I'm taking Mackenzie Hughes. We're we're going all in on a putter. I like it. Um, I think Mackenzie, when I think about Houston this year, he played really well there in Houston. And if if he just – it's like Scotty, but – a lesser version, meaning like Scotty's on this different planet. But McKenzie's right. formula is if he ball strikes it above average, like above the above that tournament week's average, mm-hmm. he has a chance. Because he's and such a good putter. He's such a good putter. So yeah. if he has that week in which he has that ball striking is is there and his iron game's there, McKenzie Hughes is gonna be there. I like it. I like it. And and theoretically, 
this should be an easy place. Like if you are one He's of the good this year, if you're a top 50 player in the world, like you should have enough in the way of ball striking to be able just to kind of get in places where you can have chance to make birdies or Eagles. And he will be good at doing that. Cause he's a phenomenal putter. So I, I like phenomenal. it. I really do like that pick. Yeah. I, I think so too. And uh, looking at, he's in a little better form than Luke list, which is why I got off of his look at this for look at this for Mackenzie Hughes. And I mean, shoot, even from what started the RSM Classic last year, he's only missed one cut. He finished second at the RSM, top 25 at Century, but T3 at Valspar, T14 at, at Houston, but he was a lot closer to the top of the leaderboard than where he finished. T39 at Heritage, but all of his numbers look much more green, not a ton of red this year. So I think Mackenzie Hughes gets the job done. This is going to be a clip. You can count on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ending with a flourish i mean i feel like if you're if we're getting to the portion where we're throwing out some other names like if, you, if you're saying this is a track where a good putter as long as he hits a halfway decent should have a good shot um matt mcneely's shown like a little bit of form this year off and on do you not I, like matt here I've, I've been really it's uh, it's been tough for me to get a feel about Maverick McNeely's game. I probably do need to do a deeper dive because I saw so much like not good form, like really yep. not good stuff. And when you saw what pre injury you're talking about, yes, yes. Yeah. And when you saw what two players like us just talked about being in the bad heebie-jeebies <laughs> headspace, we saw scores from Maverick that reflected that. But then we saw really good stuff from this year. So I just can't like go all in on Maverick yet this year, but. He could be a player that if his ball striking is there is, yeah, I'm with you. But Tom okay. Hoagie's a guy I like um, okay. this week. It just all depends on the putter for him. Um, Adam Scott, are we going to, we going to turn the clock back? I mean, Adam Scott's a guy that last I think year. Adam Scott's a guy that I, I don't hate it. I don't hate Adam Scott this week. I'm going to give a shout out to my fellow Clovis West golden Eagle, Peter quest who finished T 14 last year. Hasn't played great this year. He was in that he was in that special temporary membership category uh, at the end of last year, and then had a rough start of the season on the Corn Ferry Tour. But Monday qualified into was it Houston? Maybe I want to say, and he's in the field this week. And who knows? Let's go. Maybe go recapture the magic a little bit. Um, uh, so yeah, Minwoo Lee though, this could be a good week for him. I I, I like that. Um, you always have last to- year was an aberration. You always have to factor in KH Lee when it comes to TPC Craig Ranch. Yep. So let's not forget about KH Lee in these discussions. Um, I, I I don't know why I feel so strongly about Andrew Novak and Davis Thompson, but I do still, <laughs> especially especially this week. Um, uh, besides that, I mean, there's plenty of other really good players that you can look at. It's kind of a a mixed bag of of trying to figure out who's going to play well this week, but. Um, the only other name I'll throw at you would be uh, Thomas Dietrich. That would be mm. the only other name. I don't see how Tyrrell Hatton doesn't top 10 this week. T5 last year. <laughs> <laughs> Just lock it in. Uh, okay, good. Well, so we throw some names at you. I, I'd say like, wh- you know, wh- are we comfortable saying our backup picks are Minwoo Lee and Luke List? Or do you want yeah, to switch that's my, your back? I'll okay. have that be my Luke's backup. Been, I'll, do, I'll, I'll take Minwoo. You take Luke. If we ever get beyond a backup pick, we start getting the third string picks. Like somebody yell at us. Like that's as far as we're going to go. We're going to give you our main picks, our backup picks, and we're going to stick to those. Um, so there you have it. So just to recap, it, I have Siwoo Kim. You have Mackenzie Hughes. That yeah. are, those are the one and done picks. Uh, and Ooh, Alex Norn's another guy you could throw in a lineup too. He's a like that. He's a good like player. That a lot. Oh yeah, like he's a good a player. Yeah, of course he's a good player. SK. I mean, he's on the PGA <laughs> tour. He's he's had a good year. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, well, that that about does it for us. Uh, a lengthy one, a spirited one, which I was not. For, I didn't see that in the cards post a Classic, but here well, we are. I think it just coming off a week like this, you just feel we've been, we've had so much lead up into the Masters and just who's going to be contending, and then we finally get Adelaide and the PGA Tour with PGA kind of battle this week where we've had their huge event and then Zurich was, you know, ended up being a great event, but could have been in for a stinker. So it was, I think finally the discussion between the two of was, was needed from the show. I love that. Uh, and, and one final one, 
that this was not going to be some grand reveal anyway. It's one that I'm workshopping. So I'm just going to solicit the help of the people out there. Um, would love to, to make streaming video game previews of upcoming tour courses, events, something that we do on our YouTube page, but I cannot figure out how SK and I can do this cross platform because I'm a PlayStation guy. Smiley is an Xbox guy. What's Anyone your PlayStation out- username? I think I'm, I think I'm, well, it, it, it's, it's my last name, boy. So it's like Hume boy, but it, but it's actually, it's home boy, home boy. Home boy. Home boy. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Is that a good one? Yeah. That's pretty good one, right? What's your, what's your, uh, gamer tag? Uh, <laughs> mine used to be like Smiley Kaufman 10, which is like all my things. Yes. And then all of the boys were giving me a lot of heat for that, okay. uh, that it was a really bad tag, uh, tag name. Now it is uh, Sid to Sniper because I used to be the guy that would always have the sniper and would I hit the snipes every now and then. But when Sid hit his snipes, you heard about it. I I love that and 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 I want to play it, it that does, forward. It's Sid does sniper like Sid does sniper. So, so somebody out there listening, help help Sid to sniper and homeboy. Cross platform play, what either the 2K game or the EA Sports game, because we want to stream on our YouTube us playing the the upcoming course you're going to see for a PJ Tour event for a major that weekend. That's in the works. I was really hoping to debut. I think we're a little too short on time. I was hoping to launch with TPC Craig Ranch because I think that'd be <laughs> drenched in deep irony. But but maybe we'll have to kind of postpone it. But just comment on the YouTube or, or message us on social media or something so we can make that happen. We, we very much like to do that. So with that said, I think that's all. Unless you have any closing comments, Smiley. No, uh, no closing comments. Just uh, really like thinking about waking up at 7 a.m. and going to hit golf balls all day until I figure it out. But other than that, uh, send your swing thoughts for me. I got to I got to get in a range session or two before Tobacco Road. I really I probably and it's probably going to make things worse. But uh, yeah, wish us both luck. And uh, we will be back here this week in the feed uh, with with a, another interview. Uh leading into the weekend I think I hope uh, we have a couple, couple things in the works there but well there will be another episode we'll, we'll have that we'll, we'll promise you that and on the back end of that we'll have a recap of the CJ Cup BB Go Byron Nelson open or not open uh, just just the Byron Nelson uh, that was a great dismatch of the show thanks so much for watching thanks so much for listening and we will talk to you back here soon you know I listen to this podcast it's really cool and all of our First time. fans and subscribers but Make sure you like and subscribe. It's cool to see what you guys are doing. I know golf fans appreciate it, but we, we do too, so please keep it up. For all the good people of YouTube, like and subscribe. You guys have some good takes, so I'm happy to come on and, and shoot the